Hi guys. It is a cold, rainy winter day here <clears throat> in the middle of June. As this planet supposedly uh, <clears throat> is gripped in a heat wave here in, at Bugs in a Jar Farm <clears throat> in the Finger Lakes of New York. What is it? 54 degrees. Heading to a high of 60. <clears throat> So it's making it tougher every day to do climate change stories. And, you know, I keep trying to tell people Collapse Chronicles is not a climate change story channel. It is a uh, an overpopulation channel. That climate change is just one aspect of overpopulation. So I wasn't even, I really wasn't going to do any climate change stuff today. I was actually going to go over uh, to, what is it, the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute to look at their new report about how nuclear war is going to uh, kill us well before climate change does. But then <clears throat> several of my alert readers have uh, sent me this newest essay by Chris Hedges. And after reading it, we haven't heard from Chris in a while, so maybe we will uh, silo the nuclear war uh, report. And... Hear from Chris Hedges with his brand new column from Sheer Post. And uh, I swear I've heard, I, th I think that Clive Hamilton wrote a, an entire book by this very title a few years ago, Requiem for Our Species. Requiem for Our Species, but this is Chris Hedges' take on it. The effects of the climate crisis intrude with increasing regularity into our lives, and yet we do not act. We are as paralyzed as past civilizations were when facing catastrophic destruction. Okay, well that sounds like quite the lead-in to some flat-out doomer porn from Chris Hedges, take it away, Chris, from Princeton, New Jersey, where Chris still lives. <clears throat> as I write this, the sun is hazy, is a hazy reddish orange orb. The sky is an inky yellowish gray. The air has an acrid stench. It leaves a faint metallic taste in my mouth. After 20 minutes outside, my head starts to ache, my nose burns, my eyes itch, and my breathing becomes more labored. Streets are deserted. The ubiquitous lawn service companies with their machine mowers and whining gas-powered leaf blowers have disappeared, along with pedestrians, cyclists, and joggers. <clears throat> Those who walk their dogs go out briefly and then scamper back inside in 95 masks, as in the early days of the corona panic, are sold out, along with air purifiers. The international airports at Newark and Philadelphia have delayed or canceled flights. <clears throat> I feel as if I am in a ghost town. Window shut, <clears throat> air conditioners, <coughs> on full blast. The air quality index is checked and rechecked. We are, in Princeton, New Jersey, are hovering around 300. The most polluted cities in the world have half that rate. Dubai at 168, Delhi at 164. Anything above 300 is classified as hazardous. When will 
the hundreds of forest fires burning north of us in Canada, fires that have already consumed 11 million acres and driven 120,000 people from their homes be extinguished. What does this portend? The wildfire season is only beginning. When will the air clear? A few days? A few weeks? What do you tell a terminal patient seeking relief? Yes, this period of distress may pass, but it is not over. It will get worse. There will be more highs and lows, and then mostly lows, and then death. But no one wants to look that far ahead. We live moment to moment, illusion to illusion, and when the sky is clear, we pretend that normality will return. Except it won't. Climate science is unequivocal. It has been for decades. The projections and graphs, the warming of the oceans and the atmosphere, the melting of polar ice sheets and glaciers, rising sea levels, droughts and wildfires and monster hurricanes are already bearing down with a terrible and mounting fury on our species and most other species because of the hubris and folly of the human race. The worse it gets, the more we retreat into fantasy. The law will solve it. The market will solve it. Technology will solve it. We will adapt. Or for those who find solace in denial of the reality-based belief system, the climate crisis does not exist. The earth has always been like this. And besides, Jesus will save us. Those who warn of the looming mass extinction are dismissed as hysterics, Cassandras, pessimists. It can't be that catastrophic. <clears throat> At the inception of every war I covered, most people were unable to cope with the nightmare that was about to engulf them. Signs of disintegration surrounded them. Shootings, kidnappings, the bifurcation of polarized extremes into antagonistic armed groups or militias, hate speech, political paralysis, apocalyptic rhetoric. Hmm, apocalyptic rhetoric. <laughs> ah, there you go, Chris. The breakdown of social services, food shortages, circumscribed daily existence, but the fragility of society is too emotionally fraught for most of us to accept. We endow the institutions and structures around us with an eternal permanence. Primo Levi, who survived the Auschwitz concentration camp, observed, quote, Things whose existence is not morally comprehensible cannot exist. Close quote. I would return <clears throat> at night to Pristina in Kosovo after having been stopped by Kosovo Liberation Army rebels a few miles outside of the capital. But when I described my ex experiences to my Kosovar Albanian friends, highly educated and multilingual, they dismissed them. Oh, those are Serbs dressed up like rebels to justify Serb repression, they answered. They did not grasp they were at war until Serb paramilitary forces rounded them up at gunpoint herded them into boxcars, and shipped them off to Macedonia. <clears throat> C 
complex civilizations eventually destroy themselves. Joseph Tainter and the Collapse of Complex Societies, Charles L. Redman and Human Impact on Ancient Environments, Jared Diamond and Collapse, How Societies Choose to Fail or Succeed, and Ronald Wright in a short history of progress detail the familiar patterns that lead to catastrophic collapse. We are no different, although this time we will all go down together. The entire planet, those in the global south who are least responsible for the climate emergency will suffer first. They are already fighting existential battles to survive. Our turn will come when in the global north, we in the global north may hold out for a bit longer, but only a bit. The billionaire class is preparing its escape. The worse it gets, the stronger will be our temptation to deny the reality facing us, to lash out at climate refugees, which is already happening in Europe and along our border with Mexico, as if they are the problem. And once again, my battery is claiming uh, it's getting ready to collapse. So if it does collapse, uh, I will put the link on here and you can finish this yourself. <clears throat> Ronald Wright, who calls industrial society a suicide machine, writes this. <clears throat> Civilization is an experiment, a very recent way of life in the human career, and it has a habit of walking into what I am calling progress traps. A small village on good land beside a river is a good idea, but when the village grows into a city and paves over the good land, <clears throat> it becomes a bad idea. While prevention might have been easy, a cure may be impossible. <coughs> a city is not easily moved. This human inability to foresee or to watch out for <coughs> long-range consequences may be inherent to our kind shaped by the millions of years when we lived from hand to mouth by hunting and gathering. It may also be a little, it may also be little more than a mix of inertia, greed, and foolishness encouraged by the shape of the social pyramid. The concentration of power at the top of large-scale societies gives the elite a vested interest in the status quo. They continue to prosper in darkening times long after the environment and general populace begin to suffer." Close quote. <clears throat> Back to Chris. We will frantically construct climate fortresses like the great walled cities at the end of the Bronze Age before its societal collapse, a collapse so severe that not only did these cities fall into ruin, but writing itself in many places disappeared. Maybe a few of our species will linger on for a while, or maybe rats will take over the planet and evolve into some new life form. One thing is certain, the planet will survive. It has experienced mass extinctions before. This one is unique only because our species engineered it. Intelligent life is not so intelligent. Maybe this is why with all those billions of planets, we have not discovered an evolved species. Maybe evolution is built, has built within it its own death sentence. I accept this intellectually. I do not accept it emotionally 
any more than I accept my own death. Yes, I know our species is almost certainly doomed. But notice, I say almost. Even Chris Hedges will not let go of the hopium. Yes, I know I am mortal. Most of my life has already been lived. But death is hard to digest until the final moments of existence, and even then many cannot face it. We are composed of the rational and the irrational. In moments of extreme distress, we embrace magical thinking. We become the easy prey of con artists, cult leaders, charlatans, and demagogues who tell us what we want to hear. Disintegrating societies are susceptible to crisis cults that promise a return to a golden age. The Christian right has many of the characteristics of a crisis cult. Native Americans ravaged by genocide, the slaughter of the buffalo herds, the theft of their land, and incarcerated in prisoner of war camps clung desperately to the ghost dance. The ghost dance promised to drive away the white invaders and resurrect the warriors and buffalo herds. Instead, followers were mowed down by the U.S. Army with Hotchkiss M1875 mounted guns. We must do everything in our power to halt carbon emissions. We must face the truth that the ruling corporate elites in the industrialized world will never extract us from fossil fuels. Only if these corporatists are overthrown, as proposed by groups such as Extinction Rebellion, and radical and immediate measures are taken to end the consumption of fossil fuels, as well as curtail the animal agriculture industry, we will be able to mitigate some of the worst effects of ecocide. But I don't see this as likely, especially given the sophisticated forms of control and surveillance the global oligarchs have at their disposal. The awful truth is that even if we halt all carbon emissions today, there is so much warming locked into the ocean's deep muddy floor and the atmosphere that feed black back loops will ensure climate catastrophe summer arctic sea ice which reflects 90 percent of solar radiation that comes into contact with it will disappear the earth's surface will absorb more radiation the greenhouse effect will be amplified global warming will accelerate melting the siberian permafrost and disintegrating the greenland ice sheet Melting in Greenland and Antarctica has increased fivefold since the 1990s and now accounts for a quarter of sea level rise, according to a recent report funded by NASA and the European Space Agency. Continued sea level rise, the rate of which has doubled over three decades, according to the World Meteorological Organization, is inevitable. Tropical rainforest will burn. Boreal forest will move northward. <clears throat> These and other feedback loops are already built into the ecosystem. We cannot stop them. Climate chaos, including elevated temperatures, will last for centuries. The hardest existential crisis we face is to at once accept this bleak reality and resist. Resistance cannot be carried out because it will succeed, but because it is a moral imperative 
especially for those of us who have children, huh? We may fail, but if we do not fight against the forces that are orchestrating our mass extinction, we become part of the apparatus of death. Thank you very much, Chris Hedges, who uh, I believe has fathered three children and adopted one more. I, I've mentioned before, uh, you, you know, when Chris only had one child, uh, that my favorite essay he ever wrote back uh, when he was writing for uh, whatever the name of that place is he no longer writes for. I'm having a senior moment uh, talking about how overpopulation was the number one biggest threat to this planet. Hands down, bar none, <clears throat> it was all overpopulation. That's when he had one child. <clears throat> then he married a woman about half his age, who I guess he's still married to, and they popped out two more children, and I have never heard the word overpopulation come out of Chris Hedge's mouth again. Never once. He switched from uh, how overpopulation is the biggest threat to the planet to how animal agriculture uh, is the biggest threat to the planet and that going vegan is the best way you can save the planet. Never mentioning again keeping your pecker in your pants and not letting your knickers down. So even Chris Hedges is an overpopulation denier now that uh, he has uh, become the proud father of three and I've got no problem, obviously, with him adopting. I, uh, I hope you have been appreciating the phallic uh, <coughs> symbol of the, of the blue dragon with a, uh, <laughs> with a chainsaw erection. <coughs> and now uh, that I have wrapped this up, <coughs> I have to uh, crank up my chainsaw one of my two fossil fuel powered chainsaws and get back to fixing the handrail that I lost when my gas powered gator got loose from me last week and crashed through my handrail. And then I need to head up to the Amish fossil fuel powered sawmill, pick up some more dead hemlock trees to make me a new kitchen table for the community kitchen so uh, this old non-breeder can uh, become part of the apparatus of death while I still can I highly advise that you crank up your own gas powered chainsaw and become an apparatus of death while you still can Bye, guys. I'm trying to find where my little dog is. We're going to leave the uh, aroused Tyrannosaurus Rex. Look for a little dog. Yes, little dog. You do not seem... You do not seem concerned about the collapse of global industrial civilization or a planet. What do you think? What is your opinion of the imminent collapse of global industrial civilization and a planet? You say, Pop, it is a cold, rainy day in June. Even the chipmunks have rehibernated. I'm just going to sit in bed and be king of the bed while I still can. <laughs> yes, little dog. You do lead a tough life. Bye, guys.